I know Linda, Liz, Liz. I know Bill and Connie. You guys all know me. What? And I don't know you. Oh, I'm Kay. Kay, that's right. your kid on the block. Yeah. She's the K K O K. She's okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll sit over here. So then, we'll, oops, we'll close it up, right? So this is healing, and healing is something we can do all day long. But unfortunately, we only have a few minutes. That's what it's going to seem like. I put together um, some healing scriptures, and I've passed these out before here, and I've been here, so I don't have that many. So if you have, I have, it. have one, don't take one. If you, if I run out, and um, I think I have enough here, I can get you one. I think you probably have one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, or you can give me one tomorrow. Okay, it, I think we're good. Thank you. And what about you, Connie? Did you I have, have one. one. Okay. Okay, here's one. Now, we're not using it in class. These are just some of my favorite healing scriptures, and it's not inclusive, all inclusive. You can, I'm sure you have your own and you can add to it. I just want to encourage you. Oh, I moved. It's okay. Okay, I want, I want to encourage you. Because um, we're called to do this. So, Lord, right now we, we just give this group to you. We ask the Holy Spirit that you follow in us. And we thank you for your great love and mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you are the healer. And we just receive your anointing in Jesus' name. So, um, first thing I want to do is not everybody here knows who I am and knows my story, so I want to let you know how I got to here right now. Um, I got saved when I was 18 and filled with the Holy Spirit in my 20s. And I lived my whole life as a Christian from that point on doing stuff. You know, we tell people about Jesus and pray for people to get well and witness and do all the right things. And I thought I was on track, you know, just doing the stuff, living the Christian life. And then um, in 2010, I was writing a book for an apostle, Bill Easter. And what he would do is he would take, he would speak it into his phone and send me the file. And then I'd, I'd transcribe it. Well, before every chapter he'd send, he would speak in tongues and pray over us. And this one chapter, he, he, it just intrigued me. Whatever he was saying in the spirit, I listened to it over and over and over. And then I'm working away typing, and I thought, I need a break. I was going to take a walk. So I went to go to the door, put my hand on the doorknob, and the Holy Spirit said, don't go out there. Go upstairs. And he fell on me, and I literally crawled up the stairs. And on, I was just face down on the floor in my bed for an hour and a half. And I felt like I was being electrocuted. Mm -hmm. It was it was not heavy weighty glory. It was powerful. Mm -hmm. And at one point I said, God, are you killing me? Mm -hmm. And he told he said two things to me. He said, I'm breaking the stronghold of wine to have your life. And I'm being electrocuted by God on the floor of my living room. And I said, But God, I don't have a stronghold of wine in my life. Child of wine. Wine. Yeah. So W-A-I-N-E. W-I-N-E. Oh, wine. I used to drink wine in the evening. Oh. And I didn't think I had a strong heart. But God didn't answer me. And then he said, I'm letting you experience Bill Easter's anointing. Wow. And from that moment on, he called, he took, he took alcohol out of my life. <clears throat> he called me to the mission. And my first trip to India, I prayed for, I preached my first message. And there was a blind man in the back of the room. And I made, I made a beeline after I was done for that man. He didn't see me coming, obviously. <laughs> and he couldn't understand me because they, they speak Telugu. But I took my prayer cloth and I put it on his eyes. And faith rose up in me. And I said, I command these eyes to open right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And he saw, that man saw light for the first time in his life. And I was hooked. And so 
I know everybody here, I mean, we all pray for healing, right? The, God has brought the church to a level. 10 or 20 years ago, people might have been resistant to even talking about it, but we all know that we're supposed to heal the sick, yes, raise the dead, yes. cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. Yes. Freely we've received, freely give. So what I want to do is bring it up to another level. Because we all know people that are sick. We all experience illness. And it's like, what are we supposed to do about it? We're the church. We have to take authority. So I want you to think in the Bible, is there anywhere where Jesus said to pray for the sick? <laughs> Can you, anybody think of a scripture? Matthew 14, 8. What's that say? Uh, I have been anointed to preach the gospel, the good news. I've been um, sent to bring healing to the those in need of healing, uh, recover sight to the blind, right. Uh, right. cleanse the lepers. Right. Matthew 10, 8, heal the sick, raise there, the dead. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't say to pray for the sick. He says no, to heal no, the sick. No, no, absolutely heal them. Heal the sick. He doesn't, it's not an option. God, you do it. He said, no, you do it. Yeah. So that's our mandate. We have to heal the sick. And we all know people that aren't well. And we all struggle with healing. So we have to get into a place where we, we come to grips with this thing. First of all, um, I teach healing to children. And Linda does too in, at our church. Um, we have kids that are three, three going on four all the way up through 12. And I make it really easy because if they can do it, then I can do it. And what I've, I've learned recently, um, there's an author named Praying Medic. You all probably know him, mm -hmm. Dave Hayes. He, he has this great teaching on soul healing. And I heard this. And he, he has a, on Telegram, he has this site where people, most of them aren't churched. But they'll go in there and they'll get their testimonies. They're just, they're not struggling with it like the church does. They just, oh, God said I can do this? Oh, okay, I command healing in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I do that. Um, but he talks, talks about soul healing. So I, I want to do that first. Um, if, you, if you took three circles, if I had a picture, I'd show you. But if you took three circles, body, soul, spirit, and connect them in the center where we're connected. We're three parts, but we're one person. If we can heal the body, do you think our soul and our spirit can heal? Yeah. And spirit healing is really easy. So for the kids, we just hold out our hands and say, Jesus, come and be my savior. Live in my heart. Take my sin. Let's stay with me forever. The part of us that prays and communes with God, that's our spirit. So I, I'm sure that we're all, we're all saved here and that our spirits are connected. Yes. It's like welding. <laughs> if you take two pieces of metal and you apply the welder's heat, the molecules open up and they combine. And when you remove the heat, that joint is as strong as the two pieces. That's what happens when we get, in my opinion, that's what happens when we get saved. Yes. So it's, it's eternal. Our salvation is sure in Jesus. Um, that's how we get our spirit healed. To get our body healed, it's first thing we do is ask Jesus what he's doing. And for the kids, I, I use the, the, our arms. We have God gave us two arms. So our left arm reminds us of the prophetic, the revelatory. Our right arm reminds us of the authority that we have, the right, right hand of God. So first thing I do when I want to, let's just say, if somebody here, um, does, does somebody here need the healing in any, the, any area? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We all do? Well, do. Okay. Yeah. So, so the first thing we do is, Jesus, show me a picture. Give me your heart. We want to know what he's doing. Now, if I'm in the grocery store praying for a stranger, I'm probably not going to stand there with my hand up, but maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But I'm asking, all the time I'm asking, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then when I know what I'm praying for, then I use my authority. I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. So I want you to put your hand on any pain you have in your body. If you don't have pain, if you can't put your hand on it, put your hand on your heart. Okay, so let's do that right now. Say pain. Pain. I release your assignment. I release your assignment. I command you to go. I command you to go. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. Does anybody feel different? Yeah? Well, yeah, I could feel all those parts like chicken legs uh -huh. moving around. So are you still in pain? Uh, well, yeah. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, I could do a different spot. Yeah, this time. Yeah. Let's do it again. Pain. Pain. I command you to leave. I command you to leave. I release your assignment. I release your assignment. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So the long and short of it is that's how we pray for the body. Or if I know what I'm praying for, I command you to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. We use our authority. And the words aren't important. It's the attitude of the heart. So the next thing is um, soul healing. Can I? Yes. So the first scenario is that you were asking God, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I've been taught, we always invite the presence of the Holy Spirit because he's the healer. Right. And without his power, our words don't mean anything. Right. So are you doing that in your mind and before that? Or no. you just say, oh, she's got a cast on in Jesus' name, I command that. Well, I, I walk in that authority. But yes, with John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. And after you pray for people and they don't get healed, you're asking yourself, Lord, is it me or is it you doing this? But since he told me to do this, mm -hmm. and I know that I'm walking in, I mean, every day I'm just searching my heart. Lord, search my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me. Mm -hmm. um, when I teach the kids, we start fire camp every Sunday by holding out our hands and saying, Holy Spirit, fall on me. Holy Spirit, fall on me. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. You have a whole classroom of wild kids, and all of a sudden they're quiet. Mm -hmm. So you are inviting, are yes. you saying you've invited the presence in the morning, and so you're carrying that all day, so wherever you go, grocery store, wherever, you don't necessarily have to invite the Holy Spirit in right then, like tangibly, would you fall on this person, or you're just in that authority and releasing That's him a good because question. You're in, he's in you. Well, I, we have the authority to, re, to release him, mm -hmm. but we also have the mandate to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's important we check ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't stop. If I was going to pray for Linda right now, I wouldn't stop and say, Holy Spirit, you know, do that soul check or Holy Spirit, I invite you in. I might. Holy Spirit, I invite you in. Mm -hmm. but, but I'm not presumptuous to think that I could heal Linda. Mm -hmm. But so we, you're assuming when you reach out, if you put hands on, you're releasing the Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. I want to be obedient, mm -hmm. and I think that part of the, we all believe. I mean, what we're all at different levels, but we all believe God's the healer, right? Mm -hmm. And we all believe we're supposed to move in that. And mm -hmm. so, in Mark 16, it's. It says, those that believe, these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall speak in other tongues. They shall land, lay hands on the sick, and they shall be healed. And so we have, to, we have to figure out what are we supposed to do, and if it's not happening, why? And if it's not happening, it's not happening. But... There's something else to consider in that soul healing. Now, if, if you've ever had dinner with somebody that's angry <laughs> and they're yelling at you, 
You know how your stomach feels. Yes. And if you do that, if you put yourself in that environment enough times, you might end up with a stomach ulcer. And then you come to a healing class and you ask for healing for your stomach ulcer. And we can pray and nothing happens because there's something else going on. So that's where soul healing comes in. So here's, it's so easy. Just like you were there when I prayed for uh, Marty. So we hold out our hands. Or you don't have to hold out your hands. I teach children. I, so. I like to hold See? out my yeah. hands. I feel like I'm participating. You know, when I, out my hands. Amen. when I tell the little kids to hold out their hands, they always quit talking. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's so I, I anytime it's noisy, hold out your hands. They're like, okay, why? <laughs> okay, so um, in soul healing, We want to address those things that are hurting us. You've probably all heard of or met people that have dual personalities, different multiple personalities, and or somebody that's really upset. And our inclination is to not address those things. Just forget about it. Everything's going to be okay. But when you do soul healing, you want to focus on that. So right now, I want you to, Lord, bring something to our mind that you want to deal with. Focus on that and think about that pain. Think about that feeling. Is it anger, shame, resentment, whatever it is. Hurt. Yeah, pain. Whatever that is, focus on that. When you focus on that pain, then you say, Jesus, take this from me. So let's do that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus take this from take me. Take this from me. Heal my soul. Heal my soul. Give me something else. Give, Give me, me something, something else. else. Now, think about it again. Do you get the same feelings? If you get the same feeling, do it again. Jesus, take this from me. Heal me, heal myself. Give me some else. So easy. Now when you think about it, do you have different feelings? Yeah. That's what happens. I had restless leg syndrome, and I was praying and praying and praying, and I couldn't get healed. And I did this, this soul healing. And I had had an incident where um, I had a conflict with someone. And we really disagreed. But we, we talked, we worked it out, we said we were sorry. But it first, you know, we forgave each other, I forgave him, but it kept hurting. And I kept waking up crying in the morning out of a sound sleep. I'm like, Lord, when does this go? When does the pain stop? So I did this this inner healing, and praying medic said, think of how the Lord brings something to mind, and instantly God brought that incident to mind. And I'm like, oh, really, God? Here we go again. <laughs> but it's like, focus on how you feel. Well, I felt shame because I should have known better or something. I felt rejection. I felt pain, pain, anger. I felt all those things. So, Jesus, take these from me and heal my soul. And then when I went back to it, I didn't feel that anymore. I was shocked because then what I felt was pity for that person. So I was able to change my prayer and pray for that person. Then I prayed for my restless leg, and I got healed. Totally unrelated. And yet, when we have pain in our soul, it lands somewhere. And it will land, we're one person, we're body, soul, but it will land somewhere. It might land in your knees. It might land in your shoulder. We don't know. We're not doctors. We don't want to be doctors. We're not psychologists. We don't want to be. But we want to heal. 
So if you're de dealing with a situation where somebody's not getting healed, the first thing I would do is ask Jesus, what, what, do, you, what do you say about this? What do you want me to do? And then if I know, if it's, if it's something in the soul, then we ask Jesus to take it. Like with Marty today, it was so obvious that she had a soul. And so I thought, no, this is a good time to stand up and, and do this. So I was able to demonstrate to her that she, you know, she could spend a lot of money and a lot of time going to council to try to deal with this. But Jesus can take it. He's Amen. such a good God. Amen. He can just take it. Yes. So um, I know I'm just rushing through all this, but or, do you have any questions? That little book is in studying is that book. Most three steps to emotional healing. It's a little tiny pamphlet little book. book. And it's that's it. Yeah. 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 Very cool. mm -hmm. Let's practice. Who wants ministry? Okay, Linda. <laughs> have a seat. Okay. So everyone, stretch your hands to Linda. Jesus, Jesus, give me a picture. Give me a picture. Show me your heart for me. Show me your heart. Me your heart. Whatever you get, I want you just to say it. It might just might be a feeling, a number, a smell, a picture, an impression. I see, Linda, I see you standing out in the wind and the wind is blowing, just blowing you and your hair is blowing. <laughs> so I think that's refreshing. It's a refreshing. Mm -hmm. what, did you, what did the rest of you get? I saw you shoveling ground. Like when you push your foot on a shovel, mm -hmm. you know, because you're just trying to go deeper or the ground's a little hard and you know, you're just like shoveling ground. I haven't I've been asking the Lord why she shoveled. That's good. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Connie, what'd you get? I got the word when you did it and when you giggled. I got the word, it was like, he, and you started giggling. So giggle. 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 Bill? I didn't feel when we were in the other room the angels when we held our hands up, but I felt like it, there were angels in here that were dancing around you. And I felt the air was was a part of the motion of all that, which I've never felt something like that before. So that's unusual for me. Well, that might be the wind I was seeing yeah. too. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't know this, Liz, but Linda's just started a new work. She's she's um, the kids director, <laughs> filling in for maternity leave, and so oh. she really is digging into plowing cool. she's uh, plowing the ground. Awesome. So that was a really good. Good. Yeah. What am I? What is she? <laughs> Plowing new ground. Plowing new ground. Mm -hmm. So, so the, this is how oh, I didn't see anything. Let's ask again. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes, sometimes we are trying to see and we might feel or smell or have an impression. Hold out your hand for a minute. Push, push it with it. And look at what you get when you pull it off. You have an impression. Yeah. yeah the Lord will do that to our heart. He'll just give us an impression. I'm not sure what he's saying, but I have an impression that, or I think that. Can I ask? Yeah. How's your stomach? Do you have any stomach issues? I do. Um, mm -hmm. I, I see a nature path, and apparently I have a fungus in my gut. So we're trying to treat that. And also my serotonin level is not where it should be. So my sleep is horrible. Mm -hmm. 
So I would love for God to touch you. Yeah, mm -hmm. he wants to. Can, yeah, so I yeah. want you to come up and lay hands on you. Cool. Yeah. So, but, but let's see what the fungus else. have a name. You want me to wait? No, oh. you can stand here. Okay. That's fine. Um, and we're not going to name it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So let's ask again, Jesus, is there anything else you want to show us? So we're always listening. Once we know what he's doing, he reveals to him. So he revealed the stomach problem. That means he wants to heal the stomach problem. Mm -hmm. So Liz, I would like you to command her stomach to be healed. Okay. Can, would you mind putting your hand on your stomach? I'm just gonna hide with my hand on it. Mm -hmm. So Holy Spirit, we thank you. Just ask you to release your healing power in and through her. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command all fungus to shrivel up and die. I speak death to it right now. I command you to leave her body now in Jesus' name. I command your stomach, all things in your digestion, to come into alignment with the kingdom of God and function as you were created by God to function. Yes. Thank you. Right now, I speak to your serotonin levels, and I command them to come into alignment. We speak to this body to line up from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Thank you, Lord, that Linda has put her foot to the plow and she's digging up new ground. We, we bless the work she's doing with the children. We ask that you clear off all rocks out of the way. That she have a clear path, that she, she have a good garden with lots of I saw an image of a blackboard, but it was totally cleaned off, like a clean slate. Oh, that's a really fresh, cool. clean slate. Can you release that to her? Can you come pray for her? Cool. And the blackboard, you know, is frequently in classes. That's right. So she gives to you a fresh. Board. I just released everything that you got for her, and then this clean slate is a chance for her body her soul, her spirit, all to come into your alignment and as she moves into new adventures that you're being and showing and helping her every step of the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Thank I you. like that. Amen. And Amen. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would fill her gut with life, new flora, yes. that she would recreate the flora, the that it would stuff. be all from you, fill her up, Lord, with life. We speak life to your digestion. Also, in Jesus' name, we bind and break the power of the spirit of anxiety right now in Jesus' name. I command you to leave her now. We loose the blood of Jesus against you. You have no right. Your legal rights have been stripped. And we just ask you, Holy Spirit, you would fill her with peace. This new job is your assignment. There is no anxiety, no fear of the future. And we just command peace. We just surround you. Lord, send your angels of peace to surround her. And every day will be filled with peace and joy. And yes. dancing. And dancing. Yes. And that ground is not hard. And it is just broken up. It is you will plow, yes. send your plowing angels before her. Yes. Lord, that she's not doing the hard work, that those angels will go before her. Lord, your word says that you send your angels before us to prosper our way. So we thank you, Lord, for prospering her way. In this new venture in Jesus' yes. name. And every seed you plant is going yes. to bring forth a Amen. harvest of a hundredfold. Amen. Amen. The good soil. Yes, and Lord, we thank you for the angels mm -hmm. that you sent and they're blowing yes. new life, yeah. blowing new life and new refreshment. That's a new day, Linda, starting mm -hmm. right now. It's right there. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. That's how you do it, isn't it, Jason? And fun. Well, it's been a half hour. Um, I wanted to say something about those times that people don't get healed. Um, 
there's situations where we know of people that, that we've prayed for forever and they're not getting healed. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, he knows the beginning from the end. He knows everything. And Jesus didn't heal everybody that he passed that was sick. That's right. But he told us to heal the sick. So we go up forth, we do, and we're learning. You know, we're, I'm not ashamed to say, oh, I picked this up from praying medic or I learned this from my pastor. We're learning and it's okay. We, we're always going forward. And if we, if somebody isn't getting healed, we can ask the Lord why. We can keep praying for them. And Stephanie didn't say this. She meant to. I'm sure you've heard it. She meant to say this and then she skipped right over it. But heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. Heal the sick. There was another one. Heal the sick. Oh, cast blind. out demons. Cast out demons. Um, Recover sight to the blind. Cleanse, yes, cleanse the lepers. So Stephanie um, has this testimony of going to India and she went to a leper colony. You've heard the story, right, Connie? No. She went to a leper colony and she got to see how they cleanse the lepers. And the people, they, they take all their, the leprosy eats their bones and eats their skin. And they, it's all wrapped up. So they take off their, the gauze and they clean all those wounds that are, and then they wrap them back up. So cleansing the lepers is a, is a type of nursing. I mean, it is nursing. It's loving. So yeah, she did. They prayed for people in there. But part of what Jesus told us to do is to continue loving and nursing and caring for people until, until he comes, until he takes them. Amen. So I, I'll share one, one last testimony. In 2010, about the time I had my encounter, I also had a diagnosis from the doctor that I had hepatitis C. And I probably had it 40 years. Because there was no behavior that would have caused that except one time when I was a teenager. So that's a long time ago. And I went to the doctor and I said, God's going to heal me. He said, okay. I've heard that before. <laughs> you want the medicine? I said, no, I actually don't. Because the medicine then was really nasty. I go back every year. I get lots of prayer. I went back every year. And my readings would be the same. And I said, God's going to heal me. Amen. So, okay. And every year I come back and my readings were the same. And then I keep praying and keep believing. And then finally I thought, why do I even go? Nothing's changing. So I waited. And I waited four years. And I thought, I should probably get a checkup. And he went in and he said, well, are you ready to get rid of this? And I'm like, well, you know how I feel about the medicine. Because there were shots. You know, and, and they caused chemo and they were pretty bad. And I said, well, you know how I feel. And he said, no, there's a new pill. And it, you take one pill um, every day for three months. And it cures the hepatitis. And there's no side effects. Well, this pill is $90,000. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right? A dose? No, for the for treatment, ninety thousand dollars. But even so, wow. yeah. And so, it just so happened that I just got on Medicare, and I had just applied for extra help, and they paid for it. I paid seven dollars and seventy-seven cents. Wow, for my treatment. So I took three months of this pill, and it it cured me. But then they said, "But you know, you have level four fibrosis of the liver." So you need to get checked for liver cancer every year. And I said, well, you know, God's going to heal me. <laughs> so finally, in 2018, they said, we have um, U of C, um, UC Health, or what, whatever it is they go to. They said, we have this new machine. It's called a fiber scan. And it'll, it'll check your liver, um, everything about it. it. It reads every cell of your liver. 
So I'm like, okay. So they did this fiber scan and they said, well, it didn't work. Come back next year for an ultrasound. So I went back in 2019 for an ultrasound and they called me in and said, well, you, this is a very unusual case. We didn't think the fiber scan worked because it said you showed your liver was normal. But the Thank you, Jesus. But the ultrasound confirmed it. Thank you, um, Jesus. So he, he, he healed my liver. He used doctors to heal the disease. It took 10 years. He could have done it instantly. Mm -hmm. But when, when I went back to the doctor, I sat there. I had just come back from a mission trip. I sat there for 10 minutes and witnessed to her. Told her about the love of God. All the people I had seen healed on the mission field. And how she said, you know, we don't like to talk about healing because then people don't come to the doctor. And so I said, well, I came to the doctor. We, we, you know, we go to doctors, but we always go to God first. Okay, we're almost done. 30 seconds. <laughs> we always go to God first. And then when, whether he uses doctors or whether That's he right. uses someone right. else or whether he supernaturally uses, yes. Yes. he gets the glory. Amen. So when, when you don't get healed, keep loving, keep caring, keep praying. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for, for what you're doing. Thank you that you're the healer. Holy Spirit, thank you that you're leading fire camp. I ask that you bless us. And that everything that was said, you'll filter it out. Yes. And the really good stuff, Lord, that, you, that you're speaking, that we'll, you'll grow that in our heart. And you'll give us the courage and, the, and the, the wisdom to know how to pray for the sick. Heal the sick. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.